Good afternoon. Thank you for the introduction. And also, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to uh, present my work. So I am from Prague, from University of uh, Chemistry and Technology in Prague, from Czech Republic. And uh, as an introduction to my talk, I will tell you something about the word robot and the history of this word, because it comes from Czech language. And then I will switch uh, to my experimental work, which uh, focuses on uh, droplets. And I will show you many interesting like-life behavior of liquid droplets. So usually if I have, I, my presentation will be full of movies, so I hope you will enjoy it. But usually the slides uh, need uh, more time for uh, be there. So this uh, first slide as an introduction shows uh, two guys and this guy is Karel Čapek and he was the Czech writer who uh, wrote the theater play RUR which me and it is the shortcut of Rosum's Universal Robots and uh, also this theater play is uh, almost 100 year old it opens many contemporary questions so in this moment please forget everything uh, what you know about robots because each of you have uh, some uh, robot in your mind either some uh, humanoid robot or some industrial robot but uh, this play was uh, about different robots uh, it was about the island where was the factory uh, of uh, um, for, for making of robots which were like uh, artificial human beings but they were not the um, clanking metal constructions but human like and they were prepared like uh, for example cars so in the play, they prepared the bones and uh, muscles and organs separately, and then they combine them and they form the uh, artificial human beings. Uh, the, the story in this play uh, is very interesting. I recommend you to read it. But there was also the extinction of human race by robots. But uh, the main point is that uh, the Rosum, the uh, scientist wanted to make artificial human beings and he called them robots. Uh, we are much more modest. We don't want to create uh, artificial human beings. Uh, we want to prepare just something like artificial cells and we call them uh, liquid robots or um, chemical robots. But uh, the, the message for you is that the theater play premiered uh, on 25th uh, of January in 1921 in Prague. So maybe for some of you, it's totally new information that the ro word robot comes from Czech language. Yeah, and uh, so it was just the introduction. And now I will uh, switch to my work. Uh, as I said, I am from University of Chemistry and Technology in Prague, and uh, namely, uh, I, I am coming, coming from the Department of Chemical Engineering. Here you can see uh, the buildings of our university, and in the background, the Prague Castle. Maybe some of you visited already Prague, so you know that it is almost in the city center. And uh, I said that I said I am from a chemical engineering department. So usually the chemical engineers uh, focus on droplets from various point of views. That usually um, the, the conventional approach to study droplets is like uh, chemical engineers study the droplet formation, evaporation of droplets, their coalescence, uh, how they uh, adhere to surfaces, they measure contact angles. So this is the conventional approach how to study droplets. But uh, my approach a bit is a bit uh, unconventional and I take a look on droplets as on, as I said, uh, liquid robots or uh, chemical robots. So my work uh, is m more close, for example, to artificial life or uh, synthetic biology. And I will show you many movies and you can also see that it is something like art because the droplets that I will present uh, 
are very beautiful. So the main uh, idea is to have uh, liquid robots, which are something like living cells. Each of you know that the living cell is able to move in the environment, uh, either actively or passively. Living cells are able to absorb some molecules, process these molecules by chemical reactions, and then the products either absorb or release independent. Uh, which chemical reaction is it? So our idea is to have totally artificial system which will behave uh, in some way like uh, living, living cells. So we took the uh, inspiration from nature and this slide, which is coming because of the movie, uh, in that slide will be, is it? Yeah. Here is the slide uh, with the, the microorganism, which is called Dictyostelium discoideum. I don't know if you heard about this system. It is very, um, interesting model system for biologists because they study many um, biological processes on it. And here I want to show it because uh, I study droplets in both ways. I focus on single droplets and also on the uh, population of many droplets. So here we can see in the yellow movie how um, the dictyostelium cells are able uh, to communicate and behave uh, collectively and uh, the movie shows how starving cells uh, form the multicellular body that is able to uh, survive the conditions without nutrients. So it, this slide is here just for um, uh, as, as an introduction to uh, my studies that uh, we have the inspiration from nature uh, biologists study single cells and uh, the, the population of cells and I do the same it, with droplets. So uh, I will show you how single droplet behaves and later also how the um, population of droplet uh, behaves. So this slide was with uh, living cells uh, made by nature and uh, I am working with uh, just chemi with chemical substances and uh, almost all the presentation will be about these uh, four substances. I have um, a decanol, which uh, is long chain uh, alcohol. Uh, it is without any color, so I use the red dye to color them. So the red um, droplets in the movies will be decanol droplets. Then I have the aqueous solution of uh, sodium decanoate, uh, which is some kind of uh, surfactant. And for my uh, studies with chemotaxis, I use uh, kitchen salt, sodium chloride. And uh, that's all what you will see in, uh, in my movies and pictures. And here's the outline of my presentation. Uh, at the beginning, I will tell you something about the chemotaxis of a uh, single droplet. Then uh, I will show you how the decanol droplets can change the shape. And in the end, uh, I will uh, speak about the collective behavior of uh, multiple droplets. Uh, because this, um, so let's start with uh, chemotaxis. Because uh, many of you have various backgrounds, here are um, some computer scientists, but I think not many biologists, so uh, uh, here I will tell a few words about uh, the chemotaxis, which is a very common phenomenon in nature. The living cells and living organisms are able to feel the gradients of chemicals and respond to these chemical signals either by moving towards the chemical signal or its positive chemotaxis or run away from something which is um, harmful for them. And uh, I have observed that decanol droplets uh, have uh, similar behavior uh, if uh, I add uh, the salt to the system. So here is the example how decanol droplet uh, follows the additions of uh, salt 
And the second movie is the movie with the living cell, which follows uh, some additions of some uh, chemotractant. So this work about artificial chemotaxis was already published a few years ago. And the, this, the experiments with artificial chemotaxis are very simple. I have the glass light, usually with the size um, like 7.5 centimeters times 2.5 centimeters. Uh, I have uh, the liquid uh, solution of sodium decanoate. I add the decanol droplet, salt to the other side, and the droplet follows the, the salt additions. This movement is very reproducible. The decanol droplet always uh, follows the additions of salt. Uh, this behavior is because of Marangoni flows, because we changed the uh, surface tension and we have the gradients of surface tension and that's why the droplet runs there and back towards the salt. So this uh, is the example of the experiment in the straight channel, uh, but later I made also the more complex uh, system like small maze. Uh, here is my... I can say the most famous movie, maybe some of you have seen it already, because it has over 300,000 of views on YouTube. And this movie shows how the decanol droplet follows the salt, which is uh, in this part of the maze. Uh, later, also, I did uh, some experiments. Um, this is for just for fun, that uh, we said that the droplet can serve uh, as a chemotaxi and uh, <laughs> this uh, chemotaxi transport the dead fly. So here you can see the decanol droplet that uh, follows the uh, salt addition. So here we can see that the, the uh, decanol droplet can serve for transportation of small objects, not only dead flies, but also the small piece of uh, hair, small piece of paper. We, we tried many uh, small objects. And it, it can also transport uh, chemicals. Here is the example that uh, uh, we had the droplet with the one reactant and uh, it was able to find the second droplet uh, with uh, another reactant and uh, after the fusion of these two droplets, chemical reaction occurred. So this is the example uh, how we can use these uh, chemotactic droplets, for example, for intelligent cleaning. Uh, you can imagine that uh, there is some poison and the decanol droplet, which has something um, that can neutralize this poison, can find the, the, the place where is the, the poison go there and uh, destroy it somehow uh, with chemical reaction. So this was the first part uh, of my uh, presentation that I uh, told you something about the chemotaxis of single droplet. So we have shown that the the canal droplet have uh, chemotactic behavior similar to the chemotactic behavior of uh, living cells, that uh, the droplet can perform the chemotactic uh, movement there and back uh, um, several times, and uh, it can move in various um, environments. You have seen the movie with the uh, maze. Also, we did other uh, experiments with uh, temperature responsive uh, um, movement and so on. The second part of my talk um, will be about shape changes of the same droplets that you have seen uh, now. Uh, and how I started to, to do experiments with uh, these uh, shape changes. The First part of my talk was about the chemotaxis, and one experiment takes like uh, five minutes or ten minutes, so usually in order of minutes. But if you have the experimental setup, which is pretty simple, just the glass light with the liquid and with the droplet, so in the time the water evaporates from the system, and the decanol droplet uh, starts uh, to change the shape. So this movie is one of my first movies with this, these shape changes. And I took this movie 
uh, at the beginning of my postdoc uh, in, in Trento, in the group of Martin Hanchit, and I have sent it to him and also to my supervisor um, in Prague. Like, I have uh, no results yet, but uh, this is the message from my droplets that if I will start to think positively, then the results uh, are coming. And they were like, wow, what, 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 what happens with the droplet? Why it uh, changes this shape? And I was like, I don't know. It, 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 yeah. And uh, then uh, they asked me uh, if something like this is in literature and I haven't found it. And um, later I have sent this movie to many people from nonlinear dynamic studies and uh, other researchers. And I asked them if they know why it happens like this and they were like, wow, it's cool, what is it? And I was always like, but it was my question. So mm, we have found that uh, it's something which is like new. So then I started to uh, do more and more experiments on these uh, droplets. And in the context of uh, artificial life, uh, we can also see that living cells uh, are not always rod-shaped or, or round-shaped, and they have various shapes, and they are branching, and uh, the decanal droplets uh, have also similar uh, shape. So from, from this point of view, it's uh, also interesting to study the shape changes of these decanal droplets. And the experiments that I did uh, are, also, again, very, very simple. I have the glass light with uh, the size of uh, 18... Um, millimeters in diameter, then uh, I add the aqueous solution of uh, sodium decanoid, decanol droplet and uh, salt, and I observe uh, the system in time and the uh, water evaporates from this aqueous solution. And what I can see are very interesting shape changes of, of the droplet. So, at the beginning, I started to call them like octopus, uh, but uh, octopus has uh, usually always uh, eight arms, and my droplets have uh, various numbers of arms. So um, in my talk, I will speak about tentacular structures. So if I will say tentacular structures, I mean something like this. Here we can see uh, how the shape changes um, look like under the microscope in this uh, part and here uh, how you can observe it with uh, your eyes. And also on the microscopic level we can observe very interesting phenomena like uh, uh, myelin figures formation and you can see that it's really complex system where it's difficult to say what, what's going on. But um, uh, in this moment, we don't know what happened exactly, but uh, we can predict what will happen if you will do some uh, experiments. So I performed a parametric study when, where I changed the molar ratio between uh, uh, salt, decanol, and decanoid, and uh, I have found the regimes where the droplets, uh, this green area, uh, just uh, split in several parts without uh, tentacular structure formation. In this uh, red part, the droplets form the tentacular structures, and in this blue part, they don't change the shape. So, if you will decide to do the experiment as I did, and you will tell me how big is your decanal droplet and how much salt you added, I can predict what will happen. And in the case that uh, I will predict that you will observe the um, tentacular structure formation, I can also say when you will observe it, because it's very predictable, and here you can see three independent experiments, and uh, it always form the shape changes uh, in the same time. So, as I said, in this moment we, we don't know uh, yet what is the mechanism for this uh, pattern formation, because it's a very complicated system and uh, we must divide everything in, 
in several parts and decide what we want to study because uh, there are many changes in both in time and also in space and many, many uh, processes are involved in this uh, patterning. Uh, because we have surfactants, we can study the phase transitions, the micelle formation. Uh, because we have the surfactant, there are also uh, changes in surface tension, uh, marangone flows. Uh, on the microscopic level, we can observe the myelin figures formation, which some researchers study for for many years and still they don't know uh, what's going on. In the end, uh, we observe also the crystallization because we have the salt there involved and so on. So we are working on this and um, we already published what we observed and uh, we are open to the collaboration. So if someone uh, has some idea what to do or if someone wants to do some models, we are uh, open to collaboration in this area. And uh, as I mentioned, it's very uh, nice and also it can be uh, it, like kind of art because uh, I think if I am a researcher and I show you something like this, everyone asks me um, what happens, what is the mechanism, why uh, it behaves like this, but if you are artist, uh, just you show to people pictures like this and everyone is wow and nobody is asking. So in the, in, in the, in the case that I will not be able to explain what, what's going on, then I will just decide to, to be artist and I will have exhibitions and I will show my results to public like art and I will not expect the questions why it behaves like this. And now I will show you the movie, which uh, has 30 uh, seconds, and maybe some of you have already seen this movie in Cancun uh, at Artificial Life Conference two years ago, because I had a poster there and they wanted to have something like advertisement to, to the poster. So I prepared this one, I will show it to you and then I will have one question to, yeah, like there. I hope it will be with sound. I, I don't see Alfredo now. He had the talk in the morning about the music, and he mentioned. Is, uh, is he? He left. Oh, okay. So I will not ask him, but I will ask uh, you if you know what was the music of, of of this. Yes, it was Dvořák. Someone said it. Yeah. Antoine Dvořák uh, was the Czech composer and also in the talk in the morning uh, as we have seen some uh, composers and some names. So one of it uh, was uh, Antoine Dvořák and this was the symphony number nine from the New World. So just uh, the connection between the uh, talk in the morning and my talk. And uh, I will have the acknowledgement slide later, so let's move to the uh, third part of I don't know how I am in with time still I have 35 minutes okay so I took it very very fast because I yeah I, so I can sl slower down yeah uh, so because I have plenty of time I can uh, tell you plenty of uh, stories. So um, I don't know if you know Canon Foundation in Europe because you are not in Europe, so you don't know it. But we have in Europe some uh, Canon Foundation which supports uh, uh, scientists from Europe to go uh, to Japan or Japanese to go uh, to Europe. And uh, almost two years ago, I applied for the for the grant. 
and uh, I decided to go to Tokyo to the laboratory of Takashi Ikigami and to study the collective behavior of uh, the canal droplets. So I wrote just two pages, I was accepted, and then I started to, to work on collective uh, behavior of uh, the canal droplets. And uh, what is the aim of this uh, small project? Is to find any analogy between the uh, behavior of uh, living systems and uh, droplet systems. And uh, as you know, uh, in nature, uh, there are swarms of, of animals. Uh, we can study also the swarming of uh, cells. You have seen that uh, yellow uh, movie with dictyostelium cells. It belongs also to this uh, collective uh, behavior. Um, and also in artificial system, people study already the collective behavior. Uh, one example is swarm robotics, and we decided uh, to study the swarming of uh, droplets. My first uh, experiments were uh, about the chemotaxis of uh, multiple droplets. So here you can see a few examples where I had, the, again, the glass lights with the aqueous solution, with sodium decanoate, decanal droplets, and I add salt, and I uh, studied how they follow the additions of salt. But uh, to study such a system is very, very uh, difficult, and uh, we decided to reduce uh, the parameters and uh, not uh, to uh, have the salt in this system and uh, at first to check just uh, how multiple decanal droplets behave and interact. Uh, here is still one movie where I show how uh, multiple droplets uh, follow the salt addition. So this is still uh, the movie with salt. But in the next slides, I will show uh, the movies without salt, where I will have only the aqueous solution of the canoid and the canal droplets. But still, uh, to study how the droplets interact uh, is very uh, complicated, because we can change many, many uh, parameters. We can change the size of uh, individual droplet. Uh, we can have... Uh, various numbers of the droplets. The experiment can be on various, um, in, in various systems like in petri dishes or on glass lights. We can change uh, the size of the petri dish or the glass light. We can change the concentration of the aqueous solution. We can uh, change the pH of the system. We can change many, many parameters and each uh, of uh, this kind of experiment has shown very interesting behavior. But uh, now I will show you that I decided to study the behavior of low number of droplets uh, up to 10 with the size uh, in order of uh, microliters. And the experiments were on uh, microscopic glass lights with the size uh, usually um, 24 uh, times 60 millimeters or the square glass lights uh, with the size 24 times 24 millimeters. And uh, in the uh, aqueous solution uh, with the concentration uh, 10 uh, millimolar. But for you, I think it's not important information. And uh, what uh, we observed, uh, Again, is the, it is the experiment which takes uh, several hours because the water evaporates from the system. And uh, this kind of experiment uh, takes in the real time like 10 hours. So here you can see uh, what happened uh, in time when the water evaporated. But the next slide will show it. Uh, more in details. So again, um, I performed some experiments and I observed interesting behavior and we don't know what, what, uh, what is going on. And also some people are asking why uh, we study something like this, why nobody before us 
uh, studied uh, or has explained uh, such a behavior, but my idea is because it takes very, very long time and nobody, if, if you have experimented, if you are coming, so you will see just droplets. If you will come in two hours later, you will see droplets. But if you take the movie and you speed it up, you can observe something like this. So that's um, why we observe uh, this interesting behavior. And if I perform the experiment, uh, we observe several stages of the behavior. At the beginning, the droplets uh, move randomly. They don't attract each other and uh, they repel each other. Um, about one minute after the beginning of experiment, they arrange in the small square in the middle. This arrangement depends on the um, shape of, of, of the glass slide because on round shape uh, glass slides they arrange in smaller ring and if we have the rectangular slides they arrange in one line in the middle. And later they start to uh, repel each, attract each other and also uh, repel each other and we can observe these uh, interesting uh, oscillatory behavior. And it uh, happens until the time uh, around 20, uh, 42 minutes and then they form the uh, cluster which is static with the hexagonal arrangement and this uh, cluster is static for several hours and about uh, three hours, three and a half hours uh, after the beginning of experiments, almost immediately they they separate it, and again they arrange in in the in the space in the regular uh, small square. And after that, they uh, change their shape uh, similarly in as in the case of uh, single droplets, and they form these. Uh, tentacular or worm-like uh, structures. So here is just the summary of what I said in this slide, but here it shows me that I am talking already more than half hour. So I, so I, I'm a bit confused with, yeah, 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 but I already speak half an hour. So 15 minutes, oh yeah, discussion, yeah, yeah. So uh, here is again what I already said, that uh, at the beginning the droplets move randomly, then they arrange uh, regularly, then they oscillate and uh, in the end uh, they form the static cluster and after that they uh, separate and uh, later on, we can observe the uh, shape changes. So this was the example of the experiment on the uh, square. And if we uh, do the experiment on the, on the rectangular slides, we can observe a similar behavior. So at the beginning, the droplets move uh, randomly. And after some time, they arrange in the middle line and later on they uh, form the uh, group of uh, droplets and they perform the oscillatory behavior in this uh, cluster. And uh, here uh, we can see how their uh, Y position uh, changes uh, in time and uh, how the X position uh, changes uh, in time. And uh, I performed many experiments where I changed the size of the droplet and uh, also the number of droplets. And I evaluated when the cluster is formed in dependence on the number of uh, droplets and uh, their size. So if um, we have uh, uh, constant number of droplets. Uh, in this case, I show you the example with six droplets. Uh, in such a case, the uh, large droplets form the cluster sooner than the smaller droplets. And also, 
the, the hypothesis what, why it happens like this is because we have the higher amount of uh, the decanol in the system, which lowers the surface tension more. Uh, so that's the reason why uh, bigger droplets cluster sooner. And then we did uh, experiments where we had the same amount of decanol uh, divided in various number of droplets. And here we see that if we have 10 uh, microliters of decanol and uh, we divided it in 10 droplets, they cluster sooner than the mm, than two droplets uh, with the volume five uh, microliters. And uh, it can be because uh, the smaller droplets are closer to each other in comparison with these two droplets, which are uh, too far from each other. And uh, all these experiments were without the salt, but uh, very similar behavior uh, is we can observe in the system with uh, salt. Just the difference is that in the case with salt, the droplets form nicer tentacular structures in comparison with the system where uh, we don't have the salt. So these experiments that I have shown are in small scale where I had the glass lights with the size uh, like 2.5 uh, centimeters times 2.5 centimeters. And uh, I also performed some preliminary experiments on Petri dishes. And uh, we have found that uh, our behavior is very similar to behavior of droplets, uh, which uh, have totally different composition. And they are studied uh, with Shinpei Tanaka from Hiroshima University. And they observe uh, very similar uh, phenomena. So, Mm, our future uh, work will also uh, be will, will focus on uh, multiple droplets behavior on petri dishes, and we will try to find uh, the, the reason why the droplets organize uh, like this. But in our case, we have still the troubles with uh, the coalescence of droplets, and we don't observe such a uh, nice. Uh, uh, behavior as in Shinpei Tanaka's uh, uh, system. And another thing is that uh, I do the experiments uh, by my hand. So it means I have the pipette and I do the droplet one by one. And uh, here I have, I think, like 30 droplets, but in his system he has, I think, 70 in this movie or 100. So also it's very boring and time consuming to do the, the experiments and each droplet. So for the future studies, we would like to have another uh, or some more sophisticated uh, system for uh, droplet uh, preparation. So they told me 45 minutes for talk and then uh, questions. So it uh, shows me almost 40 minutes. So I will conclude uh, my talk. And uh, we will have more time for discussion. Uh, I have uh, shown you that uh, the decanol droplets uh, have uh, many uh, lifelike, uh, mm, they show lifelike behavior and uh, they are similar to living cells because they can uh, move chemotactically. Uh, they are able to change the shape and uh, form interesting tentacular structures. And also we can say that they behave somehow uh, collectively. And because such a behavior uh, can be called like uh, artificial life, and uh, because uh, uh, we want to prepare something like uh, liquid robots or, or chemical robots, uh, I offered a few years ago that I will organize the Artificial Life Conference in Prague in 2020 or 2021 because there will be the 100th year anniversary of the word robot. And uh, some people said that it's a good idea and almost agreed. So if you like the 
uh, artificial life studies and uh, if you are visiting uh, artificial life conferences maybe in 2020 or 21 it will be in Prague and I will organize it and you are welcome. And uh, in the acknowledgement slide uh, I will uh, introduce my colleagues. Uh, here is uh, František Štěpánek. Uh, he was my supervisor of my uh, dissertation uh, in Prague and we are still collaborating on uh, droplets. Uh, Martin Hanchit is uh, from Trento. I spent one year in his group uh, as a postdoc and we uh, collaborated uh, on these uh, shape changes of the canal droplets. And last year, as I said, visited uh, Tokyo and the Takashi Ikegami group and uh, we are collaborating on uh, collective behavior of uh, droplets. And also I would like to thank uh, the Czech Science Foundation and Canon Foundation for financial support. And I would like to thank you for uh, the attention. And I'm sorry that maybe I said it too fast, but we will have plenty of time for discussion. So yeah, I will answer your questions.